This video is using Tone Tip. Get free content wherever you get your apps. Good day, all my friends. How are you today? Yes, that's true. It is me, Marty G, for yet another edition of today's talk. And today, I have another friend that I have not talked to forever. It is my friend Callie. Callie Cardis, how are you today? I'm doing fabulous. How are you? I'm fabulous myself, and I'm so glad to see you. And yes, you do look fabulous. So your, your mood matches your flair. It always, well, it always helps, you know, one hand beats the other. There you go. Well, I'm glad to have you on because you are doing something new now. I am. I have. What are you doing? I am. I am starting to venture into working for myself. And so I've decided to take my 10 years of marketing and social media management and project management experience and become a freelancer and consultant. So I am offering copywriting services, social media management, web content, website building, any kind of marketing uh, service to our, our lovely local business owners here in Eugene. Okay. And you know, of course beyond because I can work remotely. Um, That's cool. I mean, because if you think about it, you hit it on the head. I mean, I think a lot of times when it comes to the digital space that we're in, it's like um, you tie that to one person, you never know what they're thinking or what's happening or what's going on, right? And you, 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 you pigeonhole into that one person, but now you can kind of branch out, right? And you can kind of work with everybody because 10 years over the course of time, that's, that's a lot of experience. It is. And I've worked in a lot of different industries. So I think my skill set suits really well for client work um, because I have experience talking to audiences from environmental conservation donors to ice cream eaters to um, uh, power company customers. So I can, I'm very flexible. I'm very versatile. Um, I think that my gift in this world is to be able to take complicated ideas and communicate them to different levels of audiences um, and try to make a story out of what people are doing and selling and offering. I think that's really important because I tell people I'm kind of a nerd whisperer. You got to kind of break it down sometimes, don't you? Because it's like the concept itself, then you throw all the terminology and everything else down. And digital marketing is not easy, an easy thing. How did you get into digital? When I finished business school, um, we were still in, a, in the height of the Great Recession, as we refer to it. Um, and I was living in Seattle, and I thought at the time that I would become a sustainability officer. My business school offered a sustainable business certificate, and I thought that was going to be sort of the hot ticket when I started business school. Um, and when I graduated, the jobs just weren't there. Everything had sort of contracted. Um, a lot of the green energy enthusiasm had fizzled out because of the economy. So um, I got into marketing thinking, well, I like to write. Um, the, at the time, you know, Facebook was just starting to turn into an advertising platform. Um, people were still kind of figuring it out. And so I thought there would be a lot of opportunity. Obviously, I thought correctly, because now it's one of the biggest companies in the whole world. So, um, yeah, so um, I, it was a, a lot of it was a timing thing and a lot of it was a survival thing um, and a general chasing my curiosity, chasing my general interest. So my first gig was interning for the school garden project, sorry, the um, Seattle Tilts gardening project, which was um, providing gardens to low income families. And um, I started doing social media content for them. And then I got hired at an agency in Seattle. And then when I moved to Oregon, I got hired at So Delicious Dairy Free, which is a $200 million national ice cream brand. Um, and that's where I learned food styling, food photography, um, and community management. I grew their Pinterest platform. I grew their email list and um, engagement over email. Um, and with my team created a lot of really fun content. And I also spearheaded their in-house recipe development program so that we could publish recipes, 
in our own office, in our own kitchen, um, on our website, um, almost in real time. I would come up with the recipe on Tuesday, cook it Wednesday. We would photograph it that day and have it published by the end of the week. So, And that's difficult. I will tell you folks, food is probably the hardest thing to translate from real life to a picture. It's not simple, is it? <laughs> Uh, it, it's not, especially with something like ice cream where you're, you don't have a lot of time before <laughs> it does not look good, um, especially under photography lights. So yeah, you definitely have to be crafty. Very, very true. Very true. What's been the most fun thing about your job? What do you enjoy most about your, your, your career, your, your, your chosen profession? I think for me, it's, it's audience engagement. I think that's what's so fantastic about social media for businesses. I know a lot of business owners are frustrated by social media, but it's the only platform where you get real time feedback. Um, before digital media things, you, you know, search engine marketing and social media marketing are the two channels where you can say, I wanna spend $5 on my ads and you know exactly how many eyeballs saw that ad and whether or not it's working for you. We've never had that feedback with television or broadcast or print sure. marketing before. Um, yeah. And so for a really low cost, you can try out different messaging and you get immediate audience feedback. I think that's an incredibly powerful tool once you understand it, or you hire someone like me who can translate that for you and tell you, um, you know, what are the, what is really the value you're bringing in your business that your audience is responding to? Um, I find that deeply satisfying. I also just really love, I love engaging people. I love building a community. Um, at So Delicious and Mackenzie River Trust, we were really good at building um, engaged audiences where people were asking us questions or sending us photos and, and telling us how meaningful our product or our work was for them. Um, and I think that most business owners can have a, a community of people that they connect to. Um, you know, there's, we're out here solving problems for people. We're out here putting money into our local economy. You know, a lot of businesses are sponsoring nonprofit events and fundraisers. And, you know, there's a lot of really good things that our community does here. And good marketing just tells that story and keeps people engaged with the work that you're doing. So I'm going to put you on the spot because this is a this is a tough one. This wasn't in any of my pre canned questions, but I know when I've been in your position as marketer, people always used to hit me with this. I can't afford it. I can't afford advertising and marketing. What do you tell people? Uh, work on your business model is <laughs> usually the first thing I tell. Them. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's, that sounds harsh, but I, I, I used to be an advisor at the small business development center. And I would see a lot of clients who would tell me that, you know, like, oh, it's expensive. I can't afford ads. Um, I don't know what to do. I tell them, Hey, you know what? Don't waste your money. Write down the five shortest and cheapest pathways to income for you and pursue those things. I recently had a freelance client um, who wanted me, hired me to redo all the copy on her website. And I did that for her. And I was really excited by it because um, she had, uh, she was struggling to really, um, how she describes it is um, selling herself. She, she didn't want to make the pitch. She didn't want it to sound too salesy. So I helped her just punch up her messaging so that it was a little bit more focused on a call to action. But mm -hmm. You know, one thing I told her was, you don't have to do this. You could literally just write down 10 business owners that you know and call them up tomorrow and ask them if they're interested in coming to your co working space. You know, that doesn't cost you anything. It sucks. You know, like nobody wants to make sales calls. Right. I don't think. They, yeah, no, they don't. But, <laughs> but you know, like sometimes that's what you have to do, you know, or if you're a service provider, sometimes you have to network and get to know people a little bit more so that you get more word of mouth. Almost every service provider that I talk to that I meet, they tell me most of their business comes from referrals. Um, you know, so focus on that. If that's what's going to work for you, you don't have to have a bunch of social media content that doesn't actually convert every business. So, you know, I, I like to free people from them 
saying, you know, like, oh, I, I can't afford ads. Okay, go buy them. <laughs> you know, they, they might not work. They might not work. Um, you know, it just depends. It depends on your business. It depends on how well you know your audience. It depends on whether or not you have content, you know, like a lot of businesses, older businesses, they, they need to update their branding before they can have an effective ad. Um, they need to make sure their website is fully functional. You know, you can have a great ad and that somebody clicks on and then they go to your website and your website takes 30 seconds to load or it looks cheap or it looks old and people are, you'll lose them, you know, and then you're wasting, then you're, you're spending all this money for clicks. You're not getting the conversion. So make sure, you know, I would say if, if you don't have a budget for marketing, make sure everything else in your business is on point. And then work on figuring out what, what is it going to cost me to convert the kind of customers that I want to get? What's the value? You know, how much is it going to cost me to get this customer? And how much is that customer going to be worth over whatever period of time, you know, whatever a, a life cycle of your product or service is? Um, you know, you have to kind of, you have to kind of get nerdy about it, you know, and you have to, yeah. if you're struggling in your business with revenue, marketing is almost always not the answer. It's really going back to the drawing board and saying, am I providing value? And I'm, am I charging enough for that value? Mm -hmm. And what is the easiest, shortest, cheapest way for me to get customers and start there? You know, marketing kind of comes in once once your business is moving along and you're ready to attract a new tier of customers or you're ready to build more trust and awareness in the community, right. you grow that referral network. You know, it's, I don't want to, I don't want people to waste hundreds of dollars on social media ads. And then, you know, cause I get that too. I get a lot of business owners coming to me and saying like, well, I tried Facebook ads and they don't work. <laughs> Yeah, I've you know, done that before too. I say don't waste money on Facebook ads if you're not sure what you're gonna do with them because it's and it's I like to use I like to use the tools analogy a lot of the time, right? You know, it's mm -hmm. uh if you're building a house, you're not gonna just take a hammer to it, you know. You need the right tools right. and you need to be able you need to know how to use them properly. And sometimes you don't. Some like I don't know how to hang drywall. I'm gonna probably hire somebody to do that for me. Truth truth well i mean literally i i can sit here and talk to you about this stuff all day but I, most important i want to make sure people know how to get a hold of you so what's the best cool. way to get you um to get help? really easy once you figure out how to spell my name it's only 10 letters you just go to <laughs> callycardis.com callycardis.com um okay, okay. We can be let's work to together you. let's collab let's, let's collab yo <laughs> so, folks that's the best way to get a hold of her and i'll make sure i have that information in the notes also if you did download tone tip which you don't know about yet callie but i'll tell you about it later uh okay. you'll also have the information at the end of this video so um i just am really glad just glad you're kind of spreading your wings and getting out from underneath the man and just making it happen <laughs> i'm really proud of you thank you do you have anything you want to share before we go um, I just, I would love to plug my show that's opening this weekend. Oh, that's right. I, I was going to ask. You're a thespian. That's right. You're a local thespian. Please plug the show. Oh, well, it is playing. It's playing all of August, every Saturday and oh, Sunday. Playing August. In okay, August. great. Okay. So go ahead yeah. and plug it. Sure. Okay. Um, Ooh. I am performing, um, in, uh, in Twelfth Night, uh, Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, um, with Free Shakespeare in the Park. We're playing um, at Amazon Park every Saturday and Sunday in August at six o'clock. We're just south of the community center. Okay. Um, and it's free. It's totally free. Come out, bring a blanket, bring a chair, bring your picnic, um, bring your kids, um, and just uh, you know settle in and be totally entertained. It's a great cast. It's a very funny play. That sounds amazing. And I've seen that play as my past thespian life. So I actually will probably take you up on that. I'm looking forward to seeing awesome. it. So I'll make sure that information is also included. So you can check that out. So you said it's all August on the weekend? Yep, every Saturday and Sunday in August. So it opens yep. the 6th and okay. runs through the 28th. Well, I will make sure that this uh, particular uh, today's talk runs all month. So we can get a lot of, a lot of, a lot of play for it. 
So thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Now, but before you go, I got to do something that I always do with everybody. Um, it's the time I uh, catch a little off guard. It's time for let's get real. Oh, so let's get real. I like to get real. Out my trusty book of 3,000 questions. Okay. That I've researched clinically, did a lot of research, random, to find some questions for you. And I'm going to ask you three, not 3,000, okay. because we'd be here all day. So out of my book of 3,000, here are the three that I've pulled for you, Callie Cartes. Question number one. Have you ever done something to your parents? Uh, not to your parents. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I've done a lot of things to parents. my parents. <laughs> Actually, it is have you ever done something to your parents that you regretted? Have I done something to my parents? Yes. Um. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like a ridiculously good kid. Like, okay. Like I was that obnoxious oldest child that, you know, that people would look at my brothers and be like, why aren't you more like your sister? Um, but I will say uh, there was one night, it was the night before my birthday actually. And they had like, you know, gotten like birthday things for me for the morning. And mm -hmm. I ended up um, staying out all night the night before and hadn't Whoa. told them what I was up to. Okay. I just came like rolling in at like 10 the next morning. <laughs> this was before, like, we didn't, I don't think I had a cell phone. It was right after I graduated high school, you know, okay. but I, I gave them like the whole, like, I'm an adult, you know. <laughs> I'm out of high school now, so you can't make me. Okay. <laughs> so right. I don't know. I don't think I've done, I don't know. That's kind of a weak story. That's, but That's I, the worst. I'm like, wow, that's weak sauce. <laughs> my sister I, going, that's it i'm sure i'm sure they would have a different answer <laughs> but I'm honestly thinking, i'm sitting here thinking i'm glad you didn't ask me that question right? they would probably be like oh well, she joined the navy and abandoned us <laughs> okay i don't know question number two yeah what makes you feel like a kid again hmm acting definitely acting. It's a delight, but I have a lot of um, what I call childlike pleasures. You know, like I love like, like a foamy latte with like little bubbles or like, I love blowing bubbles. Okay. You know, I love, um, I love dressing up in little like princessy dresses. And uh, I think it's important to have a lot of childlike joy in your life. And that's a big part of my personality. That's awesome. I keep telling myself I want to get involved with local community theater if I could ever find. Oh my God, please do, please. I want to. I just have to. I, I've got to um, get my business to the point where it allows me to take time off. Um, I'm yeah. Not there yet. I, I'm not quite there yet. So as soon as I do, I will be there with you. Um, awesome. Okay. So here's 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 the last question. Um, Oh, um, I lost it. Wait. Oh, okay. What is a place you think everyone should visit and why? Mm. I would say Yosemite. Okay. Um, I went there for the first time in January um, and I just think, and not even the whole park was open and I just found it absolutely breathtaking. I've never seen anything like it. The rock formations in the valley and, you know, just the river, you, when you hit the overlook and you, and the rivers down below you and you see things like the half dome wow. and the sentinel, all, it's like a 360 just view of just majesty um and wonder and I have never I don't know I've never seen anything like it before yeah, I agree with you I think about nature a lot I, I'm from Colorado and grew up there and I didn't like start even seeing the nicer areas in my state until I was much older and I was like what have I been waiting for I mean areas are beautiful and with you know climate change whether you believe yeah. it or not or whatever things change 
So they I do change and you know, it, it's not going to be the same. It's, I went to Glacier a few years ago and it, you know, it just had pictures of the size of the glaciers over the decades, all the way back to the 1800s. And How they've changed they're, the they're almost gone, you know? Yeah. And yeah, the, these kinds of sites, the natural landscapes, those, those big landmarks, they're not going to be there, uh, you know, as long as maybe like, you know, going to see, you know, I did see Notre Dame before it burned down. So that was, oh, like, wow. That's cool. That's like a, you know, you know, that's something that I think is, you know, very special, but also something you never think, you never think something like that is going to burn down. You think Notre Dame, then it's going to surely last forever and we will protect it yeah. all. But well, like trade, you know, like so. World Trade Center, I was in the, I've been, I've been up there like two years before they came down. So I get yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I can't say that like buildings will outlast some of these <laughs> you <laughs> glaciers because you never know. But, you know, like I would say, yeah, get out, get out and see our national parks um, if you can. Um, uh, they're, okay. they're just really stunning. Okay. Well, I appreciate you so much, girlfriend. And I will definitely make sure, folks, that you get the information for Callie Cardis. I want you to definitely refer her get her use her abuse her, not abuse her excuse her <laughs> i won't take abuse services. i have good boundaries <laughs> yes good boundaries for that i go to therapy <laughs> <laughs> and i'll make sure i have her information here in the notes uh and also use the tone tip if, and you'll find the information there as well callie i do appreciate you folks if you'd like to be a guest on my show please take a look for that information and uh this wasn't too painful was it no it was great it's, i'm having a blast Great. I'm, 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 I'm so glad it's over. I had a blast. Thank God I'm done. Thank no, I said I'm sad. I'm sad. Oh, you're sad. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Take care. I'll see you. All right. Thank you so much, Marty. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Straight from the mud like Ruby. Straight to the stage they love me. I understand they hungry. But please don't hate that's ugly. I've been sliding, shaking, moving. I've been popping in my city. Shout it, say she love the way we do it. Do it with me. I be too turned up to ever give a f. I ain't come to argue, let a n. Please, baby. They been talking pennies, I need bigger pucks. About to catch a flight, I need to switch it up. Got that black boy joy, might do my dance on him. Take no disrespect, might put my hands on him.